Hello, my name is Chris Dedarian and I'm one of the pediatric and fetal surgeons at Children's Hospital Colorado within the Fetal Care Center. Today, we're gonna to discuss the role of prenatal interventions, specifically tracheal balloon occlusion for congenital diaphragmatic hernias, or CDH. Before discussing the role of fetal surgery, I'd like to spend some time discussing outcomes related to congenital diaphragmatic hernia. To begin with, CDH is defined by a hole in the diaphragm which allows abdominal content to protrude into the chest cavity. This protrusion compresses the lung during a critical time of cardiovascular maturation. Consequently, in severe cases, these babies are born with pulmonary hypoplasia and pulmonary hypertension, which can be very challenging to manage. Overall survival for infants born with congenital diaphragmatic hernia are somewhere between 70 and 80% out to five years. As with many disease processes, CDH has a wide spectrum. Among the milder cases, nearly all infants survive. In severe cases, survival's been described anywhere between 10 and 50%, with quite a bit of heterogeneity between centers. Over the past few decades, advancements in neonatal care have improved overall survival among infants with severe cases of CDH. However, with an overall survival of only about 50% at best, we believe there are opportunities for improvement. Based on these dismal outcomes for severe CDH, the concept of fetal surgery was proposed in the late 1980s, initially by Dr. Michael Harrison at the University of California, San Francisco. In doing so, he performed an open hysterotomy and repair of the diaphragmatic defect before the baby was born. Unfortunately, this approach resulted in fetal demise in nearly all cases. After much consternation, the group at UCSF conceptualized the idea of tracheal occlusion. Initially, they performed these experiments in sheep and then later these studies in human fetuses. And the idea around tracheal occlusion was to obstruct the airway of the fetus in utero. By doing so, fluid produced by the fetal lungs were unable to evacuate, and consequently, fetal lungs overextended. In CDH, this overextension allowed the hypoplastic lungs to combat the herniated abdominal content. And we've seen from animal experiments that tracheal occlusion results in decreased septal thickening and increased alveolar surface area within pathologic specimens. This procedure was initially performed by placing a clip or a stitch around the trachea in utero through an open hysterotomy. The challenge with this approach, however, was that these babies needed to be delivered by an ex utero intrapartum therapy or exit procedure in order to remove the occlusion before the time of delivery. With advancements in technology, balloons were developed to exclude the trachea in utero and can be placed with a small, curved, um, rigid fetoscope. Similar to other modes of occlusion, these balloons needed to be removed through a second procedure before delivery. In 2003, the first experience using tracheal occlusion for severe CDH was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This small series found no significant survival advantage for all comers with CDH. However, on their subgroup analysis, just looking at the most severe cases of CDH, they found a survival advantage with FETO compared to traditional postnatal management. Over the years, advancements in this procedure have made it a pretty popular and safe option for fetuses with severe CDH. In addition, in recent years, tracheal occlusions changed the name to fetoscopic endotracheal occlusion, or FETO. And in 2023, the total trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine evaluating FETO. This randomized controlled trial, predominantly performed in European centers, reported a survival advantage, again with the use of FETO, among severe cases of CDH. The survival increase was from approximately 15% in the standard postnatal management group compared to 50% in the prenatal FETO group. There are several caveats to this study, which include the low utilization of ECMO support, a tool that's been shown to improve outcomes among neonates with CDH. Here at the Colorado Fetal Care Center, we offer FETO for severe cases of CDH. As we have excellent outcomes, even in our severe cases without FETO, we're very selective on who we offer FETO to. 
This decision is based on multidisciplinary meetings involving our dedicated CDH team as well as their family. We perform this procedure in the second trimester, typically between the 25th and 29th week of gestation. During the procedure, the mother receives a spinal epidural and conscious sedation. Next, under ultrasound guidance, we percutaneously introduce a rigid, curved fetoscope into the amniotic fluid. We then advance the fetoscope into the mouth of the fetus, then into the oral pharynx, through the vocal cords, and into the trachea. Just above the carina, we deploy a very small balloon and fill it with less than a milliliter of fluid. The fetoscope is then removed and the mom can be discharged either later that day or the following morning. For families that travel from long distances or out of state, we ask that they stay locally while the balloon's in place. The balloon is then removed approximately a month later. The balloon can oftentimes be deflated percutaneously by carefully introducing a spinal needle into the center of the balloon. If this fails, we perform a second fetoscopic procedure to remove the balloon before delivery. Here at the Colorado Fetal Care Center, we take tremendous pride in providing some of the best outcomes possible for babies with congenital diaphragmatic hernia. We have an expert team of many subspecialties, including neonatologists, pediatric and fetal surgeons, maternal fetal medicine surgeons, fetal radiologists, fetal anesthesiologists, and many more subspecialists dedicated to providing the best possible care for these babies. If you have any questions or would like any further information, please reach out to our fetal care center. Thank you very much.